All right, everybody, welcome back. This is MJ from Just Plain Fun. And the subject for this video is going to be suitable substitutes. That's a military term that I picked up in the Air Force. You go to the supply system and maybe a different model of F-15 that you needed a part for. So if they didn't have that part in stock, they might have a suitable substitute, something that would still get the job done. So that's what we're going to be talking about. But in this case, it's going to be in regards to hand planes and mostly Stanley, because you all know that's mostly what I deal in. So the idea here is, let's say that you pick up a, a plane that's incomplete at a yard sale, a flea market, you know, estate sale, wherever. And you reach out to me, you reach out to the tool community and you're like, hey, I need this part and nobody has it. Nobody has the screw that you need, the bolt that you need, whatever. Or... They have it, but they want $11 for a bolt. And you're like, I'm not paying $11 for a bolt. You know, I don't blame you. So what I'm going to show you is going to be some substitutes, some other places where you can maybe borrow a bolt from until you save up the $11 so that you can buy a new one. So the first thing that I'm going to recommend that everybody does, if you're a serious or even a semi-serious tool collector, is going to be to buy one of these. It's a thread pitch gauge. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to actually check the pitch on a screw. And this is really helpful when you go to order something, whether it's from me or from any other tool per, um, supplier, parts supplier. But if you've just in case you've never seen this before, maybe you've seen the terminology thrown around, but you weren't sure what they were talking about. So when we're talking about thread pitch. That's it right there. So the thread pitch on this particular screw is going to be 28. All right, the other tool that I'm going to recommend that everybody invest in is a digital micrometer. And this one is made by General, and I picked it up at Lowe's, but you can find them most anywhere here in the States. And this has actually got a little breakdown in the back where it talks about the metric and then the Whitworth sizes. But this will help you in determining, of course, the diameter of a given bolt or screw, which can also be helpful because even if your thread pitch is right, if your diameter is not right, then obviously that's not going to do you any good. And so it's a good idea to have a digital micrometer in order to be able to check your stuff so you can make sure you order the right one. So if you've been in the game for very long, then you know that Stanley used whatever you want to call it, proprietary technology. You know, there's a high speed way of saying that they used non-standard sizes. And the idea being you couldn't just go to a hardware store just like you can't now, or it's at least tough to go to a hardware store and buy a replacement bolt. You had to come back to Stanley in order to buy it. They did that on purpose. You know, and if you think about it, it's a pretty smart business move. So, but what they did do was they did a good job of standardizing them across different tools. And so, again, that's really kind of the focus. And so you take your standard spoke shave and this particular screw right here the thread pitch on it is 28 and so i can take this screw right here and i can actually install that on or in a number of different places so for example in a pinch if i had to i could actually put it on my number 78 in order to hold this uh depth gauge in place you know just as one of many examples i don't think that's going to be a good application i don't think you're going to be able to get that as tight as you would like but just know that it's the same and it will work or if you've got one of these number 83 scrapers you know same thing this would work in a pinch off of that spoke shave but also this screw right here off of this scraper happens to be the same thread pitch and will also work in a pinch on the fence on your number 78, as well as in a few other places. So it might not be the exact same length on the threads, but it will work and it will hold that fence in place on your 78. It will also work on your number 239, uh, again, on the fence. You can use that one there. It will also work on your 248 as well so all of these fence screws the thread pitch on them 28 and they're interchangeable and also interchangeable with your spoke shave oh and one more here if you've got your collection of 39s your dado planes that you're putting together this screw right here 
same thing. It's got that special design on it. It's almost like having a built-in washer, but same thing, 28 for the thread pitch and interchangeable with all those other ones that I just showed you. And here's even yet another one. I can't tell you how many times I've seen fences or heard about fences with this particular set screw missing. I don't even understand why they go missing so much, but just know that if you've got a spoke shave and you need a screw for that particular application and you don't feel like spending the money to buy a new one or maybe you don't have it, whatever, um, you can you take the one out of one of your spoke shaves and you can install that right in there and it'll work just fine. So I mentioned the depth stop or depth gauge on, we'll call it depth stop, on the 78. And I'll tell you all, as a parts guy, I get probably weekly requests, if not twice weekly, for this particular screw right here. These things are in high demand, and there's just not enough of them to go around. And so, you know, whether you're on eBay, or even if I happen to have one, you know, it's probably, you're probably looking at around $20 or more for that screw, probably 25 for 26 with shipping included. But I'll tell you, if you don't want to spend that kind of money, I don't blame you. And so if you happen to have a tongue and groove plane, this one happens to be a union, but I'm going to guess that it was after the Stanley buyout because it's the same threading. It's that same 28 pitch. So if you happen to have a tongue and groove plane, maybe you picked up a parts plane from, you know, a flea market or something, and it's a project for you. This, to me, is a perfect substitute for your rabbit plane right here because the thumb design on it, the tightening design, is ideal. You're using it on the tongue and groove plane to tighten that blade into place so that it's not going to move. Well, same concept here. And, you know, I'm, this is a, this is a good solid hold right there, easy to install, and it's going to hold that depth gauge right in place where you want it. So this is a really, really solid substitute, in my opinion, to replace that if you don't have it or you don't want to spend the money on the, you know, vintage era correct uh, bolt. So as I'm showing you all this, you know, there in the back of my mind, I am a little concerned that I'm going to be labeled a heretic. Because, of course, you know, there are the purists among us who think that everything should be 100% correct. And I agree with those people. I'm a purist myself when it comes to my own collection. Of course, I want all of the correct stuff. But this video is geared for the folks who are, you know, maybe more users, maybe don't have, you know, unlimited disposable income to be able to throw at tools and parts. Or maybe they're waiting until they find a parts plane, but you want to be able to go ahead and use your plane while you're waiting so that's who that's who we're going for and what we're going for. So just know that, you know, I'm not suggesting that everybody go out and just mix and match and throw whatever part on your plane will work. I'm saying these are substitutes that can fill in until you get a chance to get the new one. And here's another example for you. If you've got your 39s that you're putting together, your set of this lever right here that holds the iron in place, this screw that goes into that, is the same screw, same pitch that goes on your number 78, your 191, 192, all those rabbit planes get the same one, and all of your 39s. So, you know, as, as, a, as a rule, you can pretty much count on this same screw. And again, they might be a different length, but you can count on those being the same pitch, and they're going to go across many, many different planes and work just fine for you. All right, next up is going to be your routers and your number 45, number 55. There is a lot of overlap in the screws that are used on the 45, 55, and then also your router planes. And so the first one here is going to be the screw, the, the pointed screw that goes into your collar on your router plane on your number 71. This one is the same screw that goes in the fence on the number 45 so and the number 55 so that's the same exact screw same length everything pointed because it holds the fence in place against the uh the rod there and then it holds that collar in place on your router and so 
easy stuff there when you're talking about that again that pointed screw that goes there this screw right here if you have the collar that has the extension to hold your additional attachment this screw right here is the same screw the same threading as what you have on the 45 right here on your skate on your center skate same one and then there is a little bit of variance on the length for the one that holds that depth stop in place my experience has seen has been that this depth stop screw is longer but the threading is still the same so even if it is a little bit longer the thread is the same and so once again interchangeable i mean the goal here is we want to make sure that whatever we're locking in place whether it's a depth stop on the 45 or the additional attachment which is kind of a depth stop on your 71 we want it to lock into place i mean that's that's the goal there so there's some thumb screw action going on there and then i'm going to circle back to that 28 pitch screw that i was telling you all about toward the beginning whether it's this one or the one on the spoke shaves like so that one is the same as what's on the newer or the later model routers so on the later model routers you've actually got the additional attachment held in place by a smaller screw and so if you've got one of those just know that that's going to be that that smaller diameter and that 28 pitch all right here's one that i'm hoping will save some folks some money and save some folks some time uh, this screw right here, the forward tote screw on just a standard, you know, number four and a half and up bench plane, just ridiculously expensive as someone pointed out on the Just Plain Fun Facebook group, um, earlier this week. They are, I mean, if you buy one for me, you're looking at probably around $9, you know, depending on condition, if it's pitted up top, you know, I might cut you a break or if you're spending a hundred bucks, of course, I'm going to, you know, cut you a break. And I'll even include one if you happen to buy one of my overpriced totes. But ridiculously expensive, and they just seem to be missing so frequently. But if you're in a pinch and you need one, look, this frog screw right here, same pitch. The diameter is ever so slightly different, but the difference is nominal. And you can just take that frog mounting screw out, and it'll hold your tote in place just fine. I mean, through the years... These frog screws were, they varied in length a little bit, the later ones being a little longer, but <clears throat> just know that that will work in a pinch if you don't want to spend, you know, nine, ten, eleven dollars or more on eBay with shipping. This is going to run you probably closer to 15. So that's an option. All right, so I'm going to say I saved the best for last. This is by no means an all-inclusive list because there are probably 50 more examples that I didn't cover of areas where you can substitute. But I don't own one of the router planes that has a fence on the bottom, so you got to use your imagination here. And this is actually a record brand fence and not a Stanley fence. But just for demonstration purposes... You know, for those of you that are familiar with it, or if you're not familiar with it, the fence would attach right here if this had the openings or had the screw holes to actually use that. And this is a, su a suitable substitute screw that has the same pitch that will hold a router fence in place. And I actually, not to try and make this into a commercial or an ad for my services, but I actually sell these and an individual screw is going to run you about seven bucks plus shipping which is cheaper than what you'll have on ebay or if you buy you know twenty dollars or more you know i'm probably going to sell you one of these for like five bucks and then you're not even going to have to pay shipping because it will already be covered by the other items that you're buying but let's say hypothetically that you didn't have this screw you wanted to be able to use your fence on your router plane well lo and behold all you have to do is go and just grab the lever cap screw off of your number one and this one will work just fine same thread pitch and diameter as your frog screw so you'll be uh right there in business in no time you just gotta steal something from your number one no problem so there you have it now i'm going to invite everybody to go ahead and 
comment either on YouTube or on the Just Plain Fun Facebook group. Let me know what your favorite suitable substitutes are. What have you found that works and share it even better yet. Um, if you're on Facebook, share pictures of the stuff that you're substituting and the places where you're using something else in order to make your, your tool viable, make it usable. And hey, if you like this video, of course, please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Share it. Help me grow. Because as I mentioned previously, when I get to a thousand subscribers, I'm giving away a hand plane worth a minimum of $50 or more. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to up the ante. And so once I get to 500 subscribers, I'm going to give something away as well. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm going to give away something. And everybody who subscribed will have a, who is subscribed will have a chance to win it. So help me grow, like, share, comment, all that good stuff. And I will see y'all on Facebook or in the comments here.